And then uh, Olufela was asking, good day and well done. Is there a guide for testing APIs? Yes, some of what we've done. OWASP Top 10 provides you with a guide. The automated tools also helps you with a guide. The next um, session will also show us some of the things that we need to be checking out when we are carrying out an audit of an API. So um, from your information request list to the basis for which we are making those collections and some of the test procedures that we want to conduct. So um, Ife, please go ahead. So um, good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, wherever we are from, wherever we are joining from. Um, I don't know if you can hear me clearly. You may need to yeah, start copy. Um, yes, yes, you are. Okay, all right. Uh, so, um, like I was saying, I said thank you for joining. So the so uh, the previous um, facilitators have taken us about um, as and showed us what APIs are, and then also the common flaws as in that exist as when APIs have been developed. So the next bit as in that we're going to be looking out, as like Tony said, is auditing API. So what is it that we're supposed to do as assurance pro providers? Uh, so I'll be, I'll be taking you on that. So I'll be switching my screen to, to this. Uh, I don't know if you can see my screen clearly. Yeah, clear. Okay, okay, all right then. Okay, so, um, so as we are going to be looking at um, auditing APIs from eight domains. But before we go there, as I want to explain to you um, as on the format in which this document is. So as we have our audit areas, we have the requirements. So requirements are documents or artifacts as that you can request for um, as when you want to carry out an audit of as in, of an API. So as these requirements have been um, tied to each of the audit areas, then we have the objectives. So the objective states what it is as that you actually want to test as in for that particular domain or for that particular audit area. And then finally, we have the audit steps. Uh, as in the audit steps uh, tells you the step-by-step -step guide in which you can use to carry out that, as in that test. So, uh, so as I will dive right into it, uh, as in the first domain is governance. Uh, governance, so for governance, as well as, the, as what we need to be looking at, first of all, and first things first is uh, adequacy of controls. And controls are documented in policies, standards, SOPs. So the first things first is that you need to request for uh, are the IT policies, information security policies as that deals with APIs, API development, API management, API deployment. And then also the standard operating um, procedures as, in, as that deals with how an organization or, or, or how the entity as that you're auditing actually manages its API. So from the point of building the APIs up to the point in which APIs are as in actually put to rest. Um, so, um, so as on the reason, as on the objective for this is to ensure that policies and, and policies and standards on the development and management of APIs within an organization are actually adequate. So, um, as on the other steps for this is that number one is that you confirm that these policies are actually available, um, and then and and then they have been approved as in by the correct or the, or the right approving authority. That means they've undergone reviews as by critical stakeholders within the organization. And then all those stakeholders have put their sign in and then it's been approved. Uh, the next is to, is to test for the adequacy of this um, API. So you take sample policy requirements and then test them and see how, as now effective they are in, as in, in, in practice actually. Um, so you confirm as in that the SOPs also are being approved. And then these SOPs cover every single step within the API development. So, like I said, um, as like in the in the previous slides, as I was saw, where uh, Ibrahim as I was, as I was talking about API lifecycle, um, as as where it comes from, uh, your planning, your design, up to optimization, as up to the point where you even uh, put APIs um, and as into pasture, um, you as I need to confirm as in that that SOP actually covers every single part of that um, process. Um, as I need to verify that, um, as that there are procedures for all applicable requirements in the policy. Uh, as, I, as I need to also verify compliance to the SOP because it's very, very sweet to, as to document. We, as we are all in organizations where our maturity level, as in for most of our processes, is, is, is actually on the managed, that's level three. However, as what we are trying to do here is to ensure, as in that, 
whatever is documented is actually what is in practice. So, you do, so as so as you need to test uh, every, uh, as a specific, like sample uh, steps within within the SOP, um, as and to ensure that it is it is actually what is in practice. Then finally, um, through engagement and then also um, practices, as you are, as you are going to look at the secure code practices ensure that it is documented. Another bit again that is not written here, which we are going to talk about later on, is, is a DPIA, which is a Data Pro uh, Protection Impact Assessment. So at this stage also, at this governance stage also, you should be looking at your DPIA to see, okay, has data impact assessment been carried out on, on APIs that have been pushed into production? So these are things as, in, um, as, the, as the you need to check. Uh, the next bit I have is API uh, development, integration, and documentation. So as I've spoken about this a little bit, so as for every API that is going to be moved into uh, production, you need to ensure that, number one, we have an inventory of APIs. Whether it's internal, external, uh, public, private, there should be an inventory because without you having an inventory, how do you actually know where your organization is exposed? How do you actually know what it is as that you're going to be protecting? So, First things first is that you need to request for that inventory. You need to confirm as that the records in that inventory are actually accurate. Um, for you to confirm that they're accurate, you, as, as you need a combination of your local knowledge of the environment, and then also you interviewing and engaging with the critical stakeholders from the developers to the guys who, who deploy, as to the guys who actually consume APIs within the organization. Um, the next bit, under, still, still under governance, as in the next bit, as in that we're also going to be looking at is your service level agreements. Um, APIs are supposed to allow interconnections to third parties. Um, and, and, and then we all know that there are risks as when third parties uh, connect um, as, into, as, into, as into organization. So the first is first under this is to ensure that we have a list of, as in like an inventory of all our third party clients consuming APIs within our organization, third-party applications, third-party clients that are consuming, um, uh, as that are consuming uh, as in our organization's API. Then the next bit is to ensure that there are, as in that there are SLAs in place, service level agreements in place. So for, as a for, so, so for this, um, as in the objective is to ensure that agreements on service or API usage are documented, maintained and signed off. So for this, the first thing that you, as the, as the you need to do is after you've obtained a list of all the third parties that are consuming APIs, after you've obtained a copy of all their SLAs, is to ensure that these SLAs are actually executed. And, and for an SLA to be executed, that means both parties need to have actually signed up. So you do need to verify that it has been signed up. And then as that these dates are actually still valid. So it's not like an SLA was signed up from 2019 to 2020 December. And now we are as in 2022, as that as that LS, SLA is actually not enforceable. Um, number two is to look at is to verify the usage terms and conditions are explicitly defined in the SLA. So there are no gray areas. Everything is spelled out is um, okay. And then um, as in the way that I do this is to ensure okay. that critical stakeholders within the organization have actually reviewed it. Stakeholders like legal, stakeholders like. Um, uh, legal, the information security guys, the uh, as, as in the operational risk guys, as in that they have all reviewed these SLAs and then okay it. Um, number uh, thirdly is to ensure that within that SLA, as in that there are requirements or conditions, as in that enforces data uh, security, as in that enforces uh, the organizations who you are sharing these APIs with, as in to secure. The, as in the data that they consume from your as in from your APIs, and then there are penalty clauses, there are NDA uh, NDAs that's non-disclosure agreements as that are tied and binding within as a, within the SLAs, and then lastly, as I need to confirm that the internal policy requirements of those third parties, you need to confirm the internal policy requirements of those third parties. So, do these third parties actually take information security serious? The only way that you can know that an organization takes information security serious serious is for is for is for um, it's for you to go through um is it's for you to ensure that they have policies in place it's for you to ensure that um as that these policies are actually signed off as a by top management so you can ask them for their information security policies ask them if they are um if they are um if they are certified as unto um, as unto well-known certifications like the ISO 27001 
and then um, and then the next. So as in the next domain as that we're going to be looking at authentication, authentication and authorization review. So for authentication and authorization review, uh, in this bit now as, in, as we are reviewing API access management. So like I said, first things first, as, as for you to be able to review that as that bit, as I need to know all the APIs that you have. Um, as in that as, as in that information, as that inventory, as like I spoke about earlier on, it should be detailed. It should contain um, as in the application name, the application IP addresses, um, as in the that's information as in that can allow you to be able to drill down into uh, as in as in into that inf um, API. So the next bit is for you to review that list provided and ensure that all applications having access uh, having access have unique identifiers. That means you can uniquely identify each of those applications. It can as in this as this can be in the form of an API key or maybe other forms of identification. You, you need to confirm that these systems and applications are authorized to as in, to access the APIs. Um, as in you need to um, as in you need to review the API management portal we are keep, uh, as applicable. Uh, as and to as and to look at um, as we are applicable as and to look at um, to as and to confirm who and who have access to these portals so as and to look at who and who have logs uh, as and to confirm if access is actually as in if everybody that has access to those portals are actually um, has actually required those access you need to um, so this is where you are testing for the principles of least privilege so who and who have access what kind of privileges do they have is it beyond as what they require so those are the things as they are uh, checking for um as a, you need to verify that apis are configured at application level to deny unauthorized access uh, you need to confirm as that there's an authentication medium or logic for all requests coming to your apis so this is really important. So what kind of authentication is your is your API using? Is it using request uh, authentication? Is, is it using a, as an adjacent web service or OAuth? There are several of them. So you need to verify which one is it, and then verify as that you're using the latest versions and things like that. So and then uh, finally, confirm adequacy and effectiveness of authentication principles. Then um, lastly, under this domain um, is is your next of access control. So for this now. You, as, a, as you need to obtain a copy of a firewall configuration and ensure that only authorized IP addresses, uh, IP sources are permitted as in to consume API services. Um, as I'll move on to the third domain, as in the third domain um, talks about traffic and event monitoring. So this is basically API monitoring. So for this bit now, as I need to ensure that your APIs have been monitored. But for you to be able to know that is number one is to get an inventory of the monitoring tools that your organization has there are several types of as in of monitoring as, as that can go on here you can get um uh, as in your sim your theme uh, sim is um system event um uh, monitoring tool For example axide curator uh, so as you get um as in the inventory as in a list of all the applications and tools, as in the request for access. The, as in the reason for this test is to ensure proactiveness in preventing or managing API incidences. So as what you are going to be looking at here is that you're going to be reviewing access to those monitoring tools, uh, looking at the configuration of those monitoring tools to ensure that they cover your APIs, all your critical APIs within your organization are actually co covered and then they have been monitored. Um, you need to um, verify that API services and communications are being monitored for abnormal requests, large responses. So, example, if your API normally sends uh, 10 kilo kilobytes of information as as in as in as response, and it's suddenly sending five megabytes of information, as a, that's an outlier. So, are you guys monitoring incidences like that, or are you guys monitoring events like that? So, you, so as I, you need to take. Um, cognizance of this. So as when you are reviewing that bit, as that's one bit as that you should look at. So the next domain, uh, that's domain four, is looking at vulnerability assessment review. So for vulnerability assessment review, uh, as in, most of us understand the concept of secure coding practices. Secure coding practices preaches that while your code is being developed, as in that you're reviewing the code for security flaws, as you are doing vulnerability assessments. But even beyond that, as when you deploy your APIs into production, you need to ensure that these APIs have been, uh, as the vulnerability assessment is being conducted on these APIs. So, um, so for this bit, you need to obtain your vulnerability assessment reports. And what are you checking in your vulnerability assessment reports? You want to ensure that 
that exercise, the vulnerability assessment that has been carried out for the organization, from, um, also included all your APIs. So, you know, or, earlier on, as you've requested for an inventory of your APIs. So now, as you have verified that all those, as in everybody that is in that inventory, vulnerability assessment has been carried out on that person. So, and then it should be periodic. It's not just one off. It should be periodic, maybe quarterly, half yearly, but at least periodic. And then you should confirm that if vulnerabilities have been identified, that there are processes in place as and to remediate identified vulnerabilities, that there are processes in place as and to ensure that compensatory controls, and then those processes are actually effective. Um, we might be talking about 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 APIs here as about these these are general information security practices as that every organization should embed, and we as auditors should always test whenever we have the opportunity. Then the next bit is log management. So for log log management, what are we looking at? Um, Ibrahim was talking about um, the API commands: get, uh, delete, post. As in, he spoke about four of them. All these are activities that are being carried out by as in by APIs. You need to ensure that every single activity that your APIs are doing, as in that they're actually being logged. So you do this by obtaining sample uh, API, uh, logs, as in logs from, as in from sample APIs and reviewing those logs. Um, when you're re reviewing those logs, like I said, you need to um, ensure that activities are being monitored, uh, as in are being captured in, as in the logs, like logging, access control, server-side include validation failures. You want to ensure that all this is being logged. Um, sufficient user context identify suspicious, you know, you want to ensure that the logs are actually adequate. Uh, you want to verify that the logs are being, uh, as that are generated are in a format that your centralized log management solution can actually consume and then work with. You want to confirm, you want to confirm that the logs are maintained for all the API services as that you've identified in your, in your organization. Um, also, you want to you also want to verify that the information being captured within your logs do not expose um, sensitive information. Uh, Chinedu spoke about uh, sensitive information. As in another way, where hackers or, or people who have unauthorized access as can actually gain um, as in gain um, uh, as in gain as in gain information as modern as modern is required. Is, is by going through your logs. So you have to ensure that sensitive information like your pins, your passwords, as your as your hashes are not captured in your logs. And then even if they are captured as in that they are as in that as in that they are maxed, you as I ensure they are as that they are maxed. You want to very, very finally you want to verify that the logs are archived and retained according to the organization's retention policy. So the next domain is going to be input and uh, inputs and data validation. Can you just spoke about this? Um, uh, excess, uh, as in extensively, he as in, as where he was demo, as demonstrating um, as an input validation, uh, and then how your API reacts as unto that input. Um, as in, does it expose more as more information as in that, as than is necessary? As in, can it actually um, as can it actually uh, accommodate various forms of input? So um, as in the example that Chinedu gave us, as in we saw that um, as in that the information about the API as it was, as it was disclosed as by entering uh, special characters. So we, we as auditors, we should carry out those tests also. We should carry out those tests, we should ensure, so we can, um, we can put in uh, special characters and see how our, our, as in, our, as in our API is actually um, respond. So, um, as, and then uh, as like uh, Shine uh, said, um, as an input validation, as it can, as in, that's as if your input val as validation is not prop properly managed, it can lead to SQL injection attacks, cross-site scripting, and then other vulnerabilities. Um, then, as in the seventh domain, second to the last domain, uh, talks about data protection and server sites, uh, server security review. So, for data protection, you know, earlier on I spoke about your DPI which is your data uh, privacy impact assessment as that should be conducted even before your APIs are released into production. So uh, as when you are conducting your DPIA, as you are identifying, okay, as what, as what kind of data is my, is my uh, API going to be consuming? As what kind of information is it going to be um, releasing? Are there, are there PIIs there? As can we minimize, um, um, as their principle of data minimization um, and, as in enforcing my PIIs? Um, as you're, uh, as you're looking at consent also. So um, 
you need to ensure that all these and then the reason why we are doing this is because um, as and the reason why this bit is really important is because of the advent of the of the of the gdpr um, as that's for uh, as that's for the the european uh countries and then also even in nigeria here as and we have the ndpr as a, which was um as in which came into effect february 2019 so we need to ensure that data protection is covered we need to look at uh, so for us to be able to do this, we need to review our logs as we need to go through our API management tools. We need to have a workshop with our developers. Um, we need to confirm, so as for the test, we need to confirm that all required information that is being re returned by our, I think that our API services are actually what we expect them to be. Uh, we need to verify that data is being encrypted as an encrypted, um, maybe as an in transit or maybe at rest. Um, we need to ensure as in that the encryption mechanism as that is being used um, as in by as in by our um, API is actually um, is actually um, a standard one as in that as as that is not um, as as that has not been known um, to be as in to be vulnerable to as in to as in to um, as in to as in to uh, data exposures. That means uh, as when you are using an encryption mechanism make sure as that you're using one that is robust as not one that the hashes can actually be de decrypted easily um and then another bit is to search for um sensitive content within codes um Chinedu also mentioned that so all these bits uh as that Chinedu had practice are also contained within this um within this document as that as that we've come up with um so uh, then another bit uh so another uh, audit area here is also to review of test of API communication management. As I've spoken about this, ensuring that you no know, encryption, confirming the as confirming the authentication controls as that are implemented within your APIs. Uh, then finally, for that domain, as we are going to be looking at API server security. So as it's all well and good that our APIs are web facing as in their as in their on the internet and all that. But however, the back end where these APIs are hosted. As part of the audit of APIs, you need to also look at that uh, bit. You shouldn't forget to look at it. So here now, as you are ensuring that the servers that are hosting your as your APIs are actually hardened, and by hardened I mean that uh, your information security uh, controls are actually implemented on that, um, and as in on this server. So as in we are looking at things like access control. So you are reviewing it to see okay, who has access to it, who has administrative access. Do they actually need this? Are they as are they existed staff? So um, another bit again, as they as they are looking at the security patches, at this servers actually at the at the patches of this servers actually up to date. Um, another bit again is the endpoint protections, as in for this server. Sorry, uh, protections for these servers like antivirus, like your um, DLP solutions, like your film solutions. Are they actually pointing to these servers? Are they are they getting logs from these servers? Um, the web configuration files that are on these servers are they actually secure? Uh, as we've seen instances where um, um, critical does uh, administrative users does the usernames and passwords that are being used by these web services are actually left in plain text on the servers. So these are the things as that as that you need to do. Then also the capacity of the servers. Then finally, last uh, as on the last bit as that we are going to be looking at is business continuity uh, and change management review. So for business continuity and change management review, it's, as, in, as we were talking about availability and then the ability for you to be able to recover um, as in, in the event of a disaster. So for this part now, as in, yeah, as in we need to first of all pick the IT policy of the organization, the backup policy of the organization, the, as in the BCP plan, as in your DRP plan, as in your PIE, to ensure that APIs are covered within all these plans. Um, you want to confirm as that there are backup processes in place, and then, and, and then these backup processes, um, these backup as in like for other critical applications within your organization, uh, as in also covers your critical APIs. You want to verify that these backups are tested. You want to confirm as that you have redundancies in place for your critical APIs. So with redundant channels as in that in the as in the in the event that your primary one fails, as that you have a secondary uh, one as in that can actually take over. Then finally, uh it's change management review. So for change management review, um you want to ensure that changes to uh, to APIs that are in production actually goes through your change management process as an organization. So 
for any changes as in that as that wants to occur to your middleware to your as your API services as as that you have exposed to third party application, you must ensure that it has gone through your standard um, change management. That's UHs have been done, extensive testing have been done, approvals have been obtained before those changes are made as into uh, as into applications as in that time production. So um, as that is all, like I started before, I said that there are eight domains. I've gone through those eight domains. Um, as I'll go back to the slides now, um, as I'll go back to the slides now, sorry. So like I said, as in that there are eight, as in eight domains, and then those eight domains actually covers everything that the facilitators before me have, as in, have, as I've actually spoken about. So um, I'll be concluding, um, but before I conclude, um, there's a quote here, and then I'll be bringing Tony in. You know, Tony started this um, as in this presentation as by as by uh, giving us a quote. So we also want to wrap up as by also saying that if software is eating the world, API is at it as uh, as API is at the teeth. And then this quote is from is from EC Council. So as I'll bring Tony back in for him to wrap up for us. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much um, to all the faculties and the speakers. Um, I think we'll just go straight to question time. We have barely 15 minutes to wrap up. We have no intention of keeping you beyond the one hour 30 minutes that we spoke about. So let's, um, let's do this in an orderly way. If you have any questions that have not yet been answered on the chat group, but you require some form of clarification from the speakers, please will you just indicate by um, a show of hand on the chat, and then we'll just call you to unmute yourself and speak. Wow, we have 82 folks here, wow. Okay, so um, we'll just do that quickly, quickly. Um, Chinedu, Ibrahim, Ife, it would be nice that you're on standby, please, just in case there are questions that um, will require clarification. So if you have a question, please, can you just uh, indicate? Then we'll bring you up to school. Okay, Tony, Tony, why we wait? Because there's no hand up yet. Can I just let you know that there are some, I think I'll let you, let you know that there are some questions here. You've okay. provided answers to some, it's so far easy, but um, there is one for Mohamed El Fati. Sorry if, uh, if I didn't pronounce that well, Mohamed. He said, is it practical to find logs for all APIs, services or action, or there should be, there should be some use cases? So there are two questions, that's the A part, and the B part now says the previous speaker mentioned SOAP applicability in banking domain due to security when it compared it against REST. From your experience, is it the situation on ground? On the ground? So we have two questions from Mohamed, so um, I don't know if the facilitators, the faculty can give that um, responses to the A and B part. Okay, Chinedu, please, can you and Ibrahim, but before, before you, they, they respond, I'll say in terms of practical, practicality of um, have keeping all logs. Now, it, it, it depends. I'll say that there, there should be a business case, right? Um, the nice thing would be to keep all logs, but can we really keep all logs? So you might want to adopt a risk-based approach um, towards dealing with, with that. Um, Okay, so okay, I, I think it's, Tony, sorry for cutting. I think to throw more light to what he's saying, Mohamed. Risk based meaning that even when you have the inventory of all your API services and actions, uh, there would always there would always be critical systems, critical APIs from non-critical. And uh, so once you identify most especially the public facing APIs and what you have on authentication and the likes. So you can now use, you must reference the logs of those ones and give more attention to those ones than the ones that are non-critical. Then the B parts, uh, okay, Chinese has not talked on that. Um, that's so, I think the reality from the few banking experience I have is that SOAP is usually more for internal, uh, that's private APIs, like the HR system that, um, then Ibrahim talked about. So you see more of that applicability on 
um, internal APIs. Most of the time, larger percentage of those public facing APIs are REST, except it's not that same way in your environment. But and that's what I have seen in and from experience. Thank you. Is Chinedu still on the call? Yeah, yeah, he's, 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 he's typing. He's okay. typing. Okay. okay. So, yeah, Chinedu, you want call. to respond to Ibrahim's? Yeah, I think um, um, she has done justice to it regarding the login part. So, okay. in terms of, of course, it's not everything that you can log. It's almost impractical to do so. Um, but, you know, as an organization, you have to take a risk-based approach, point out which one is critical, um, try to try to simulate an, you know, an incident, right, and look through your login strategy to make sure that, okay, are you able to, you know, respond to this incident based on, you know, um, what you've decided to log, right? So, because um, at least the common things that should be in logs, you know, the action that was performed, who performed the action, um, was the user authenticated or not, you know, things like IP address or maybe user agents, you know, all those things that we, we that you know that will come in handy during maybe an incident response situation. Yeah. Um, as to the second question of soap versus rest, um, it depends. I know I've seen soap in um, various payment systems. Yeah, payment systems I usually see a lot of soap, you know, XML formatted um, requests there. Um, for rest, I see it a lot in both in payment systems and other ones, and I think is a is a very preferred um, option. To soup for most um, for most developers. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Any more questions for those of us requesting to be part of the WhatsApp group? You could just drop your. You can just send me a private message with your numbers, and I'll add that after this session. Any other questions? We have eleven minutes to go. I guess we have experts in the house, but there are no questions. So <laughs> maybe, maybe they just maybe a larger percentage of people is just to just unlearn, relearn, and all. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fantastic then, fantastic. Um, if you're dropping your number, please put the plus plus um, and the code just so I can we don't miss out on that. Um, we hope that we 